How you doing everyone? I uh, just wanted to take a minute and put together a video of some of the real life hardware and electronics that we're dealing with using this Tinkercad circuits program. Uh, it's interesting. I learn in different ways. I usually have to have hands-on activities and it still can take me a real long time to understand something like this. It, if you're still struggling to get it, I totally empathize with you. It's not real straightforward stuff when you're dealing with electricity, but the uh, the particular assignment uh, introducing the breadboard was giving you a bunch of basic circuits where you just push a button to complete a circuit and power three different sets of lighting inside of one LED bulb. That's why it's called an RGB LED. You have red on the left, then you have the longer pin, second from the left is called the cathode, or that's just the negative side. That's where all the electricity flows out of when it gets power to that bulb. And then you have the blue and then the green on the right there. And uh, it's very particular. Uh, you cannot reverse the direction of electricity. You can't try and send any power into this longer second pin here. Otherwise, it's uh, not going to work. An LED is a diode, which is an electrical gate. It's like a heart valve. It only allows one direction flow. So uh, here is one form of the circuit. I didn't follow the specific design pattern in, uh, in Tinkercad to build this, but that's one of the things about a breadboard is it gives you a lot of flexibility. You know, so you have your two power bars on the left, so you have, uh, I have a cheapo 9 volt battery plugged into this board and you can see I'm tapped in up here because there's just, this is like one long wire going vertically uh, in both of these columns. So anywhere I put electricity into it is powering that entire bar and anywhere I put a negative contact in it's going to take electricity from this and send it back to the battery. So the way that this ends up working here and you can see the first thing that I have is the uh, the negative side or that second longest pin on the LED goes down into the board the center rows here are powered across so the electricity is going to come out of that bulb underground whoop, into this black line across to this row into these are different kinds of jumpers here they're just straight pins that go down in so i have electricity going from here underground across up and over and then down and back to the battery and then from here the way that the push buttons work is you're completing the circuit so this power rail the positive rail has an electrical line going and over to an underground bar here into the pin that's directly underneath that black dot. And then when I push this down, it connects the electricity path to here, which then goes underground, up and over to, I know it starts to get a little tricky to see, but I connected that first button up there down to the power into the furthest pin on the bottom here. So the electricity is going to go down, up, and into the bulb. And like I said, all the three wires will have the negative side of the electricity going back to that ground bar. So one of the things that I did specifically here, just for fun's sake, is uh, I eliminated the resistor. And I'm holding the resistor to... Uh, point things out here. I've been doing a lot of outdoor stuff. My hands are all gritty, I apologize. But, whoop, just put that down. So, a resistor is a electrical choke. Some devices, if you put too much electricity to them, will burn out. In some cases, if you don't put enough, it won't work at all. An LED is uh, an interesting device. It does require, you can actually see if you look closely at that LED, that I've already burnt up one of the colors. Um, it's a little bit brown in color in here. 
Now, like this is a gas-filled chamber, and that's one of the things that's unique about an LED bulb and why they're so cool is they don't take much electricity at all, which conserves a ton of electricity. It takes a specific amount of electricity flowing through this gas chamber to excite the gas and make it glow. So, ultimately, it's power needs are specific and if you do it wrong it's either not going to work at all or you're going to burn it up so um, resistors there's all different types they come in different ways I have different packs and the bands that wrap around those resistors are what tell you the amount of electrical resistance in those resistors and I have all kinds of different types and I was having trouble with the um, we used a, a 480 I believe it was, which I'm not getting into the math or anything yet. That's definitely not something we are ready for. But this particular resistor was the 480 that they asked us to use in the Tinkercad circuits program for an RGB LED. And the thing is, um, this particular RGB LED and that RGB LED require different amounts of electricity to work. It's just how they're designed and they're designed for different purposes. So I tried using that one at first and it didn't work at all. And then this particular one did work, but I was having problems with the, uh, the color. It wasn't lighting up the same for each individual color. And, uh, so I was toying around with some different resistors and then I decided I was just going to have some fun. Um, I'm not even going to take the time to put the resistor in, just take my word for it. It does glow, it's just not very impressive. But um, uh, this wire here has no choke for the electricity, which means I'm going to send too much electricity to that bulb. And you'll see what happens if, uh, if you do that. Ready, set, see, I cooked it, burnt it up. I had already cooked the, I think this was the red originally, I, don't, I think this was the uh, blue up here, and I'll do it one more time, I haven't cooked this one yet, but I guess it just cooked out because I cooked the entire thing with that last one, but yeah, um, the amount of electricity going to a device is very particular, so doing that wrong is dangerous um, in a case of a little LED bulb not going to do too much damage if you have some sort of uh, device tapped into uh, an Arduino board remember that these are the same boards that are inside of the controllers that you guys are using in class you just uh, have a, a big component system surrounding it to make it easier to plug into the, uh, the different parts of the Arduino and um, the good thing about playing around with LEDs on an Arduino board is most of the time you're plugged in off of a USB port on a computer, which uh, the high speed ones only put out up to 5.5 volts, which is exactly what most LEDs require. If I have a straight 9 volt battery, that's going to send way too much current for that and burn stuff up easily. But um, what you could also do is all of these pins you have, we had messed around with a circuit and it was using pin 13 to just make a LED blink. And you'll see that on the, uh, I'm going to find it here, there's an onboard LED right there that blinks any time that you're using 13 specifically. There's just a completed circuit going through those things. But you can tap into all of these and you can send power to it and you can power a bunch of things like LEDs. And uh, you can also control the amount of electricity coming out of the board specifically by coding it. And that can be an easier way of controlling the amount of power flow without having to use a resistor and all the kinds of math that it takes to figure out how to control the electricity flowing through something. So I just figured I'd give you a little bit of a real life demonstration and show you that the circuits that you're building um, as much as it's not the most thrilling thing to work on software, if you're actually trying to map a design out, it's so much more efficient to use that new program, and you know, instead of having to 
buy all these kits and deal with all of the wiring and trying to figure out what kind of slop you're dealing with because wires get really tangled up and messy and in the way and it doesn't make it very easy whereas the software is uh, actually a much simpler way to go about developing designs so thought it would be a good idea to give you guys a real life example sorry I got some flicker on my phone video here but it's all good hope you guys are getting along well if you have any questions need some help with this stuff I know again it is not super simple and straightforward it's overwhelming um, to learn this in some cases depending on how your mind works it can be real difficult so reach out I understand I'm here for help talk to you guys soon